So hello and welcome to today's community webinar. Um, today I'm really excited because we're joined by Suzanne Rosenberg, the Head of Learning and Development at Elysium Healthcare, and Richard Chambry, um, who's the Director of Chambry Learning. And today we're going to learn about how Elysium built um, a learning platform using Total Learn. And this is a community webinar and we will be recording the webinar. So it will be available on demand in the community after the session. If you do have any questions today for either Richard or Suzanne, please do feel free to ask them in the chat or in the Q&A and we'll be able to answer them either at the end or as we go. So thanks very much and a well, massive welcome to Suzanne and to Richard today. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm, really be, I'm really pleased to be able to share with you today the work that Elysium created in partnership with um, Chambry Learning Solutions to double the traffic through our Tatera Learn based LMS, um, which we called My Elysium Learning, which is known, and you'll hear this throughout the presentation, as MEL for short. Um, what I'd like to cover with you today is who Elysium is and how we've grown, which has been massive as a company. Where we were with our learning management system three years ago in 2018 where we wanted to be, the vision of our CEO and our senior management team, where we, where we are now, because it's been a, an incredible journey, how the solution has had a positive impact on the business and staff retention, and COVID-19, which is, for all of us, we know hit us very quickly, um, but as a healthcare organisation, we literally had to adapt overnight. And for the future now, where we want to be and our, our vision for the next phase. And at the end, um, um, Richard and myself are happy to answer any questions that you have. I think the webinar will probably take us around 30 minutes to 45 minutes, and I hope you find it useful. So first of all, I just want to go through some background um, to Elysium. So Elysium Healthcare launched in December 2016. And at that time, the company launched with 21 services and 1,000 staff across the country, um, mainly being in England and Wales. Um, but I think at that time, they also had one service in Scotland. Over the last few years, further acquisitions have enlarged the group. And we now have over 70 services supported by 6,000 permanent staff and 2,000 bank staff. So a massive, massive change to what we were in 2016. The center of our philosophy is the fact that the journey is all about the individual. The individual is absolutely key to everything that we do at Elysium. By ensuring we deliver individualized care, which is evidence-based, we believe people can move through pathways of care as their condition improves. We're also committed to making families and friends an active part in each other person's recovery process and helping all reach the end goal, which is so important for everyone, of a more independent living where, there is, where it's possible. We currently um, look after over 2,000 service users at the moment, which again has been a massive growth in our business. Our staff group is mainly made up of healthcare staff, but is also supported by central services of HR, IT, legal, finance, marketing, maintenance, and catering. So what do we do as an organization? Our healthcare offer covers mental health, neurological care, learning disabilities and autism, children and education services, and private outpatient services. So as you can see, we've got a vast array of different services and different needs. As well as these services, we also run three schools, which sit with our hospitals for young people. The school helps each individual student find their voice, develop their own talents, and become more confident as an individual. So where were we? And this is going back um, to 2018. As a healthcare organization, we, were governed, we are governed and audited by the Care Quality Commission, CQC, in England, and Healthcare Inspectorate Wales, obviously in Wales. One of the biggest areas that we're monitored on as a company 
for our staff is them completing their statutory and mandatory training in order for them to be compliant, to look after our service users. In 2017, Elysium worked with Chambry Learning Solutions to create a learning management system that would look to record and monitor this information. Richard, do you want to add anything here about the project? Yeah, hi Suzanne. <clears throat> when we got the call to help Elysium, um, we had a good look at the existing site from the ground up. <clears throat> Felt it was a little bit out, out, outdated. It really only offered access to core training and it was, it was kind of lacking some wow and accessibility and ease of access factors. <clears throat> My team worked with Elysium's national IT training manager to redesign the site from the ground up, including new theming. And it's not just applying a theme, but we fully developed a new theme to mirror the internal systems with lots of new interactive elements to introduce a more individual feeling for staff, uh, to make it feel more interactive, to give more guidance on how to use uh, Mel. That was launched within a few weeks of Elysium agreeing for us to take over the site and it worked fine as an introductory process to get staff to rebuy into the platform. And over the next year, we worked with the IT training and the L&D team to make sure the site was working as it should, that access to training was simplified, but there was just still loads more to do on it to bring it up to the standard where it is now. When Suzanne came into the organization and came on board, uh, we met with her pretty much straight away and met with the team to plan for the next phase of development. Thank you, Richard. Um, I joined Elysium in 2018. Um, and shortly after I joined and, and after meeting Richard, um, I did a review of the current setup of Mail with my learning and development team, staff and learning and development administrators across the business. And it was interesting what we found. So the look and feel did not match our brand. The LMS was not being utilized to its full capability. Reporting metrics were poor. There was low flexibility to respond quickly to needs and poor engagement with the system and lack of visibility of the core learning offer. So basically at that time, the only thing it was being used for really was about recording statutory and mandatory training. I always remember walking into a site and going into one of the admin offices and I was hit with a wall of Excel spreadsheets. And I just thought, what is going on here? And the individual explained this was the way that they recorded and monitored and planned all of their statutory and mandatory training. When I explained to her what Mel could actually do, she was absolutely shocked. And this made me realize that we needed to do something differently. So Elysium sets out to provide straightforward, accessible and empowering information to their staff on the learning, development and career opportunities available. To achieve this, our CEO is completely committed to our vi her vision to offer a career for life, not just a job for now. To support the vision, we wanted a site that really, really reflected our organisation, its culture, its values, it's amazing people and it's commitment to career progression from within. For me, the result was to be an engaging Totara Learn platform that employees could access at any time from anywhere and be a one-stop shop for learning and career development. This would be the one place that they would go to to find everything they wanted. Obviously, what we want to really look at is a place where they could review the training offer, complete any e-learning they needed to do, re re review our qualification offer and the train the trainer programs and so much more that we had to offer as an organization. With this in mind, I spoke to Richard regarding the organization and my vision for the LMS going forward. As is usual with my style when dealing with Richard and working with him, I drew this as a picture on a piece of paper. Richard, do you remember that discussion? Oh, yes, I remember. I remember when we met for the first time. Uh, Suzanne drew what she, had, what she had in mind. There was also a big drawing on the wall that, you know, staff had written out what they wanted as well. Um, we knew the site needed further development. And through those conversations with Suzanne, those ideas that she was having really formulated that planning process to, 
drag it forward and push it forward in the way it needed to be. The vision Suzanne's had are really inspiring. The existing redesign had moved the platform forward. We've modernized it. We've got more attention from staff. We just needed to take it now to that next level and take it from stat manned into uh, that vision that Suzanne had. So using those, um, those drawings as a guide, we looked at a variety of websites. We looked at demo sites. We built mock-ups, spent some days on site, basically pulling those ideas together to create what is now Mel. Thank you, Richard. As well as working with Chambry on the design element, we also, at least also engage practical change partners. And I worked with Claire Lawrenson to support in building and delivering a new learning strategy so that we're able to sell career pathways into the business in a logical and easy way for staff to understand. To do this, I worked with Claire to carry out and review to understand what we had available to us and what we didn't. So what was the gap? which helped us clarify our options for structuring career pathways. Get detailed input from our people, because at the end of the day, this system is for them. So we wanted to look at what would be really helpful to them when looking for career information. So we knew we were building the right tools for our audiences. So we created um, focus groups um, to actually gather that information, use that information to build what we've got today and also to feedback. We wanted to design a new menu structure. Keeping things simple is often harder than making them complicated, but simplicity and logic were key principles to this design. The great thing is we had the commitment of the leadership team to develop, but where we were was that the tools and the process delivered really did need to have work on it. So what was the solution? We worked together to clean the data feeds, resulting in more effective statutory and mandatory reporting. And this was a massive job for us, to, because at the end of the day, if the data wasn't clean, we were building a system with old data. So it's absolutely crucial that we did a complete data cleanse. We built a new course catalogue, which I'll show you later, enabling employees to search by title, specialism and course type. We built a new, fully responsive, intuitive and rebranded theme for learning that worked on all devices. The theme was designed, and this was really important, to mirror Elysium's internal systems. And also we were about to launch a new employee branding. So it was again crucial that we made sure that Mel matched this branding so that staff felt they were learning in a fully integrated process. To maximize the user experience, the core navigation structure was designed to provide very simple, succinct menus through which staff could find exactly what they were looking for with a minimum amount of clicks. By understanding and articulating the career paths of healthcare workers, nurses, and leaders in Elysium, we were able to create and provide real life case studies these were case studies of people who had grown their career in Elysium and were more than happy to share that information. We built role profiles of jobs that might be the next step forward in career progression. And we built capability frameworks to help people assess and evidence their current skill sets. The real benefit of using Tatara Learn was that so much functionality already existed we just needed to tap into it and develop what we needed. We were really lucky that we worked so closely with Chambry's developers to help us design the new dashboards, which then formed templates for the team to build the look and feel, which gave us the freedom to start to build things as well. So what I want to do now is just go through with you the look and feel of the new mill. So you'll see here now, this is the first page that people see when they log into the system. We wanted to look and feel to present our new employee branding. Therefore, we redesigned the logo, used the photos and colors that were being used for as part of our recruitment drive and internal communications. So this way people would really understand that everything was integrated together. 
We went for the block as I felt and so did my team and the users that it was much clearer and much sharper. From this front page, with one click, it leads to so much more detailed information. So when you click on my development, the next page you are taken to is all the programs, pathways and skills. So you can see here, these are all different routes that people can actually go through. And the one that I want to share with you today is the one on pathways called healthcare. So what you'll see here is the first part of the pathway provides an opportunity for healthcare staff to review a variety of roles that they could consider developing into. And the role that I want to look at here is an activities coordinator. So what you can see here is this page provides staff with an overview of what the role will cover in real detail. But on the right hand side, you'll see there's a video, a link of a video of someone who has grown into this role to provide them with information to help them decide if this is a career choice for them. And I think also just listening to someone who's been in their position and has now grown really gives people the confidence to then want to develop. They're also able to move to further information on skills, apprentice qualifications and career pages, which you can see on the right hand side. On this page here, you will see that it gives a number of apprenticeship qualifications that a healthcare worker can consider to undertake to assist them with their development. So they can move with still within healthcare or they might decide to go into a completely different field and then use their skills to transfer into this. So the qualification I'm going to look at with you today is the apprenticeship on sports and leisure. So what you'll see here is the page provides information on the different qualifications they can apply for under sports and leisure. And it also goes through the process. So if somebody wants to undertake this qualification, they can just click on the application form, complete that, send it off to the learning and development team, and they will do the rest and they will liaise with the individual. But you'll see here as well, what they can do um, is if they click on the activity um, leisure fitness, that will then bring them up a fact sheet. And within that fact sheet gives them all the information about what that qualification is going to cover in order to help them make their decision. The next part of the pathway is called skills to build. Um, so what you can see here is there's a number, and this is not all of them, but this is a number of e-learning packages that they can consider completing. And also what will happen here is just one click will take them straight to the e-learning package. So you'll see here under understanding our service users, if they click on adult obesity, it will take them straight then into the e-learning package. They complete that package and then that gets recorded in their learning. As I mentioned um, earlier on, the other area that we wanted to look at was the catalog. Because when we, when we reviewed it in 2018, this was literally a list of courses from alphabetical with very little detail on it. And Richard would probably agree with me. It was one of the key areas, Richard, wasn't it, that I wanted to look at. Suzanne was not happy with the <laughs> catalog, to say the least. <laughs> so we have moved so far um, with this area. So we wanted to redesign a catalog, enabling employees to search by title, specialism and course type, but also that it looked engaging for people to go through. So you will see from the left-hand side that it's broken down by specialism and then it's broken down by face-to-face -face and e-learning, which just makes it so much easier 
um, and more user friendly for staff to be able to look and find what it is that they're looking for. We also decided to go for the grid format picture, as I say, rather than the list, as we felt it was just so much clearer. And we've had so much positive feedback from staff since we've um, launched this. So that is what we now look at for Mel, and this is what it looks like today. One of the biggest challenges that we've got in the organization is that the majority of our staff don't spend their day sitting at a computer. Their role is to look after our service users. So actually communicating with staff is sometimes a real challenge for us. We have learning and development contacts in most of our services. We have, learned, we have um, regional training managers as part of the learning development team who look after a number of services. But we are constantly looking at different ways that we can actually communicate with our actual staff. So when we launched the new Look Mail, we sent postcards to staff's home address. We created posters for the staff rooms. We wrote briefing sessions for managers to deliver and we developed a series of e-shots. And even though this had a good response, it still didn't give us the response and the interaction with staff that we wanted. So over the last six months, the learning development team has created mail masterclasses for managers so that we are managers are invited to attend an hour session so we can take them through how they could get the best from the system and how they can share the information with their staff regarding the offer of career pathways. We've also just launched again in the last six months, staff learning workshops. So we could talk them through the offer and how it can support their role for today and career going forward. And we also focused on staff who just completed their probation because we wanted to be able to really showcase to them what the offer is. And obviously this would have a real impact on staff retention. These have been really, really successful. And the majority of the people that have attended had limited knowledge of what was available in mail and were just like blown away about what was an offer. And we will continue to deliver these sessions every single month going forward. So where are we now? The statistics you can see from the screen demonstrate the level of increased engagement from employees to the newly desired Totara-based mail site and the huge increase of user logins from 2020 and the first quarter of 21. Even during the pandemic, which ordinarily may have lessened engagement due to the increased requirements for direct patient care. So by making Mail a one-stop shop for learning, this pushed staff into one place where they can actually now find everything that they need. As part of our objectives, Elysium set out to increase engagement and learning, development and careers, while reducing the cost to services and sites. In just one year from the launch, we have increased e-learning course options from 50 to over 200, promoted over 400 course opportunities on the new course catalogue, which is partly blended e-learning and face-to-face, -face. seen a significant increase in regional collaboration. So these are people who are specifically subject matter experts in a different specialism who want to come and work with us to create other face-to-face -face training or e-learning packages with us. We've run a number of successful recruitment campaigns based on development opportunities, and we've implemented virtual um, classrooms to deliver induction and critical COVID-19 related training to sites nationally. And I'll come on to that shortly. By changing the way learning is designed, delivered and promoted nat nationally, we have increased staff undertaking formal qualifications by 72%. We've increased traffic to My Elysium Learning by 99%.
We've saved one FTE through increased self-service and reduced administration. And we've increased staff retention levels. All of these we are really, really proud of. Staff awards. In 2021, we decided to go for um, a number of awards. We won the Gold International Award for our Overseas Development Programme, which we couldn't have delivered without Mel. Um, we designed and won um, a Best Dementia Training Initiative, which again is delivered face-to-face -face and through Mel. As part of Nursing Times, um, one of our staff, John Podmore, won Nursing Associate Trainee of the Year 2020. And again, a lot of his training and development, he actually achieved through accessing Mel. And of course, most recently, we won a special mention for the Tatara Best Healthcare Project for 2020. So that dreaded day on the 23rd of March, 2020, where we were shut down. As you can imagine, for a healthcare company, this hit us really, really hard. We need to focus on keeping our staff and service users safe. But if hardly doing that, we had to more or less stop all of our face-to-face -face training. Obviously, we couldn't let internal or external trainers from outside of the services enter. And also due to the demands of staff, internal service trainers were required to deliver healthcare on a full-time basis. This really literally rocked us overnight. But nothing is too big a challenge for the learning and development team. So by using um, Tatara's intuitive course building tools and ease of updating the system navigation, this provided us the ultimate flexibility for the learning and development team who were all relocated to working from home to redesign, convert, and deliver previous face-to-face -face training as e-learning and virtual sessions to keep the business compliant and patients and staff safe. PPE. In addition to this, new training programs had to be designed to support the changes in infection control protocols and the wearing of personal protective equipment. This was something none of us knew that much about. So it was a massive learning curve for all of us. As well as using the system to record training, we also used it to record all staff who had a fit testing of their masks because it was absolutely crucial that we knew at any time who had had this training and who had had and has a mask fitted. So where do we go next? We believe we've got a solid framework underpinning the learning and management system. And our next plan is for the future and further maximizing return investment in Totara. It never stops for us. We're always on the next things that we want to do. So we're really looking forward to the new app coming out because this will give so much further access for our staff. We want to look enhancing our reporting. We want to look at building more leadership tools. We're in the process of building a chef academy. So any, anyone in our catering team that starts with us, there is a clear pathway for them to move through the academy and their career. We've been building with Shobhanri our own bespoke care certificate and we're looking to launch that in the next couple of months. We want to look at making um, application forms electronic and working with Shombri on the workflows. We're about to launch on the 1st of July, the recording of all supervision. We want to look at e-appraisal and 360 degree feedback. So there's so much more that we want to achieve and we believe the journey for growing our mill will never change. Thank you for listening to me today. I hope you find it interesting and I'm happy to take any questions that you might have.
Well, thanks so much for such a brilliant presentation today. And it's great to hear that you're doing things that are just obviously so important, especially at such a trying time with COVID. And it was really wonderful to hear about the fit testing and, and the masks um, as well. Um, if anyone has any questions, please do feel free to ask now. But one question I'd like to ask Suzanne is, as someone who's starting up a new site and trying to improve, what were some of the biggest lessons you think you've learned or things that you would pass on as advice to others who are starting this journey for themselves? I think there's two things for me is don't try to change everything overnight. And but should know that is something that I want to do. But, you know, you have to do this in small chunks. First of all, it's too much for the users to take on board if you're going to try and change everything for them. The second thing is employee and manager engagement. I'm a great believer that people own what they create. And Mel is not for me or my team. Mel is for our staff. So I think it's absolutely crucial that actually you work with staff to make sure that you can build a system that's going to work for them. That's really good advice. So just start, make sure you don't do everything at once. Um take things slowly, but get everyone involved as well. Ensure you involve the right stakeholders. That's excellent. Um, the, one of the points you raised was really interesting about the regional collaboration. I don't know yes. if you want to say anything else about that. How did yeah. that work? Um, so I did a restructure of, of the team um, about a year and a half ago, and we split into um, specialisms rather than regions. So one of the good things about doing that is the regional training managers work really, really closely um, with the staff in their services. So through that, they were able to identify subject matter experts on different subjects that we knew we wanted to develop, but that we didn't necessarily have the skills in our team. So that was what really expanded our regional collaboration to be able to design the packages um, together. Great, thank you. Um, we have a question. Um, is there an option to map out a skill set that employees have through through the platform? Yes, there is. Um, Richard, do you want to say a bit more about that? <clears throat> yeah, as part of um, the build of the development journey, every area that they go through, this, it basically outlines the skills and the learning that's linked to those skills that an employee would need to be able to progress in through their role and also into new roles. So the screens that Suzanne showed earlier, just a very, very small snapshot of the work that was done by Suzanne and um, <clears throat> Claire at the time to basically make sure that if you go into Mel and you click into the development journey, once you go in, you can therefore see the skill set required for a job. And I think as part of the appraisal process moving forward, I know Suzanne's looking at using uh, Toto to perform, is also looking at competency profiles and how you can assign those to individuals and then map the, you know, the rises and falls against those competency achievements. And I think the other thing we're doing as well by building our own bespoke care certificate, we've actually built into Mel all the competencies um, that are required against the care certificate. And then staff go and they work through it and they complete e-learning. And then the manager goes in and assesses them. Um, so again, that's a, another way of building a skill set, people actually going in and doing some work against it. And then the manager going in confirming that. Yeah, the, the care certificate that we've helped uh, Suzanne to build isn't just a series of e-learning, a series of courses. It is a set of courses linked to a set of competences, linked to learning plans, linked to profiles to enable basically a full holistic journey through that program. Great, thank you so much. Um, another question I, I was going to ask was, you mentioned that you've improved um, staff retention. Um, how do you think that's, that's happened, Suzanne? I think managers now are more aware of what the offer is on mail. And also the fact that we're running the workshops for staff and we're actually targeting directly staff who are coming off probation. We've seen a massive increase then in them, either, um, staff either undertaking train the trainer courses, which allows them then to go on and deliver training in their services, or that they're willing to stay to complete a qualification. So people can actually now see that actually it's not just about doing statutory and mandatory training. 
is actually a much bigger picture here. So I want to stay in actually to grow into this. Um, and one of the areas we've really looked at is about growing our own nurses. Um, and, and that's a, an area that healthcare workers always want to look at. They don't always want to stay as a healthcare worker. They want to be able to move into nurse, nursing. And by having that clear pathway has definitely, definitely helped um, with our retention. It really could have such a positive impact on people's careers. Absolutely. Um, another question, the care certificate in the roadmap, is that something that the employee can use if they move to another care provider? For example, could they show a portfolio maybe? Uh, they will get a certificate um, once they've completed it. Um, so the certificate they can then share um, if they go to another organisation. We've made a decision that if anyone comes to us and um, they've got a care certificate certificate, we will still do observations on them because we don't, we don't know the quality of the training of another organisation. So we want to make sure that that individual is trained to the level that the, we want them to. Great, thank you very much. And just um, one more question. You, you talked about sort of marketing the LMS internally yeah. and you talked about the, the master classes as well. Do you, do you think that this is something that's really important to ensure the success of, of, of a platform like this is, is to do that internal marketing and, and to try and engage managers? Absolutely. Um, and I'm sure some of my training manager are, are listening, but they would say this has been one of the most positive things that we've done from a marketing point of view, because every single person who's come on, it's gone. I really didn't know that much was on mail because what happens is people go on to mail to do their statutory mandatory training. They go on quickly. They do it. They come off. What they don't always do is spend that time actually going through and looking what's there. So what these master classes have done for both staff and managers is given them, provided that platform of time for them to be able to just stop and actually listen and take on board to what is actually available and to ask any questions with colleagues and with my team as well. Great, that's, that's really good advice. Um... Okay, is there anything that you think you'd like to, to finally say or that you'd recommend to anyone else if they were, like I say, starting this journey or less lessons that you think you wouldn't repeat perhaps if you, if you did it again? Um, I think the thing, I think it's what I said earlier, don't try and do too much too quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, have a real clear framework by phasing it and that's what we did in the end. What do we want to achieve in phase one, phase two, phase three and going forward? And try as best that you can to stick to that. Because if not, it just becomes um, a huge task and you'll end up completing bits of things rather than focusing on a clear phase that you want to complete. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Richard, is there anything you'd like to add to the end of the presentation today? <clears throat> I'll just agree with Suzanne. The work that we did on Mel was really phased across a couple of years, uh, short, sharp bits to move the platform forward. Uh, really quickly so I'll just reiterate what Suzanne said is it was the planning behind this by Suzanne and her team that's enabled it to be such a big success. Well thank you so much um, for your presentation today it's been really brilliant and I'm really glad that Totoro has been able to help you and especially all the nurses and everyone else working in the healthcare organisation to be able to um, yeah, develop their careers and feel that they would like to stay as well so that's brilliant. Um, Again, thank you very much. And uh, it's been great to hear about this. I can't wait to see what's happening next with the platform as well. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. <laughs> okay. Thank you both. And thank thanks you. to everyone who's joined today.